What's up guys, so I've gotten a video request to tackle a video on radiometric dating. And man guys, do I hate this topic. I don't like physics and I don't like chemistry unless it's organic chemistry. I'm a picky guy. So if there's anything you guys would like to add on to this video, feel free to drop a comment. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Nearly every textbook and science magazine teaches that the Earth is billions of years old, and the primary dating method used for determining this is what is called radioisotope dating, or radiometric dating. Sure, we use radiometric dating to determine the age of the Earth, and this is done to a pretty good accuracy with a margin of error to about 0.1 to 1%. Scientifically speaking, that is very good. One of the primary methods we used was dating the uranium and lead in zircon crystals from the Jack Hills of Australia, but more confirmation was acquired by dating meteorites that were formed in the solar system. Keep in mind that we don't just have one measurement, we have multiple ones that cross check each other and ultimately give us 4.54 billion years old. Your move. Now this is a reliable method for measuring absolute ages of rocks and the age of the earth, right? You're goddamn right. Huh. First off, many scientists now regard the age of the earth to be between 4.55 and 4.6 billion years old. Yeah. Okay, fine, we'll go with that. Okay. So if this method is reliable and accurate, why the 50 million year discrepancy? That seems like a lot. Because we can't possibly know the exact date of the Earth. It's literally impossible to narrow down the age to a single year. That 50 million year range is only a 1.1% inaccuracy. Do you know how little that is? That's pretty much as accurate as we can get. If you say 50 million years old, sure it sounds like a lot, but it's the percentage that matters, not the absolute value. And notice how your stupid 6,000 year old hypothesis doesn't even come close to fitting in within that range. I'm assuming you're a young Earth creationist because why else would you be challenging the Earth's age? But let's get into some details here and see what's going on. Keep in mind that there's all kinds of scientific jargon on this topic and so we'll just present a very straightforward, simplified version of the process. You guys ready to learn some science from a creationist? Radiometric dating is the process of estimating the ages of rocks based on the decay of radioactive elements in them. Basically, there are certain kinds of atoms in nature that are unstable and spontaneously decay into other kinds of atoms. For instance, uranium will radioactively decay through a series of steps until it becomes the stable element called lead. Okay, well, to be honest, he's presenting it pretty well. I'm going to keep rolling the clip until I have something I need to say about the video, but at this part he does give a reasonably informed presentation on radiometric dating. The original element is called the parent element, and the end result is called the daughter element. Radioisotope dating is commonly used to date igneous rocks, rocks which formed when hot molten material cooled and solidified. Okay, sure, we date igneous rocks, but that's not all we date. And I'm gonna shut the fuck up now and let the video play, because I realize I nitpick too much. The dating clock started when the rock cooled. During the molten state, it is assumed that the intense heat forced any gaseous daughter elements to escape. <sighs> Alright, no nitpicking. No nitpicking until later. You'll get your chance, Dick. It is assumed that once the rock cooled, no more atoms escaped, and any daughter element now found in the rock is a result of radioactive decay since that rock formed. The decay rate is measured in terms of half-life. That is, the length of time it takes half of the remaining atoms of a radioactive parent element to decay. Now, of course, that can be measured in a laboratory, and it is assumed that since we know the decay rate, we can calculate backwards and come up with the age of the rock. But is that all there is to it? Here's where it gets tricky. It's true we can measure a decay rate using observational science, but there's another kind of science that is required to accurately calculate dates for rocks, and that is what we call historical science. Look at you creationists making up these categories of science. These are not real categories. No one uses these except for creationists. This is just a manipulation technique you guys use to sound more legit, but you're really not. And just because we observe something in the present doesn't mean we can't make a claim about the past. When a detective walks into a murder scene, he can still deduce the events of the crime without witnessing the crime itself. Similarly, we can deduce the age of the rocks and fossils by applying some math to the clues we are given, and this is extremely reliable. I can't wait to see what kind of excuses you will bring up later. Historical science deals with the things in the past, and therefore it cannot be repeated and tested. Except that we can. Dating methods require both types of science, because in order to get accurate rock dates, one would have to accurately know both the decay rate and the initial conditions of the rock sample, right? And we do know both of these things. We do know the initial conditions. If you take a look at any decay equations, they all have a variable that requires us to know the initial conditions. So yes, we know them for God's sake. Since radioisotope dating uses both types of science, we can't directly measure the ages of rocks. There are assumptions involved. There are assumptions that we make with almost everything, but many of these assumptions are based on facts we already know. I'll hammer this more when you give us specific examples. For instance, how do we know what the initial conditions were in the rock sample? 
Okay, to be fair, this is a tricky question, one that a lot of people might not be able to answer, but that's what I'm here for, right? Let's take a look at the scenario you gave in your explanation earlier. Igneous rocks. See, we don't always claim that the daughter element in every rock we date started at zero. When the igneous rocks were molten, they didn't assume a shape since they were in the liquid state due to the heat. During this state, the daughter element, argon, could easily move around within the huge range of liquid. Such motions are able to force the argon out of the sample. When a volcano spits this molten rock out, it eventually solidifies. A solid rock is no longer a liquid, and thus any exchange between elements of surrounding lava ceased. It is at this point that we know that any formation of daughter elements must have occurred from the decay of the parent elements within this particular rock. Under the knowledge of this fluid motion of constant element exchange in the molten state, we know what the initial conditions are, since diffusion of elements gives us a certain See, it really isn't that hard. But of course, depending on what we date, the initial conditions differ. Keep in mind that what I just said was for igneous rocks. How do we know the amounts of parent or daughter elements now in that sample haven't been altered by other processes in the past? Because that's just ridiculous. Who do you think these scientists are? Do you just think they just go ahead and do whatever they want without considering the possibility of contamination? Samples that are suspected to be contaminated won't be dated. They only select the purest rocks to date. In addition, scientists collect as much information as possible about the rock and its environment before confirming its age. And if this still isn't enough, they even date multiple parts of the same rock body, not even with just one dating method. Multiple ones are used in conjunction, and when they all agree with one another, we know that our results are reliable. How does someone know the decay rate has remained constant since the rock formed? Now, that's just really fucked up. Of course it's reasonable to assume that the physical constants of the universe have remained constant. It's stupid to think otherwise. But like I said previously, we use multiple different radioactive dating methods to confirm one another. For example, the Amazoc Nisus from Greenland was determined to be 3.6 million years old using uranium lead dating and 3.56 from lead lead dating. If you say that the decay rates possibly change, then you are saying that all these decay constants of all these isotopes have all changed the same way as to give us consistent results but not accurate ones. Now that is absolutely ridiculous. The answer is, they don't. I think what you meant to say was, you don't. Let's simplify here and talk about a typical hourglass. Let's say you walk into a room and you see an hourglass with sand at the top and sand at the bottom, and some sand sprinkling from the top chamber to the bottom. Well, observational science would allow us to see and measure the sand, and then calculate how long the hourglass has been running, right? We could make our sand measurements and then calculate when the hourglass was turned over, right? Well, radiometric dating is so much different than a typical hourglass, you piece of shit. Well, those calculations could be wrong, because we may have failed to consider some major assumptions. Like, was there any sand at the bottom when the hourglass was turned over? What? Well, your past self already debunked that point. Let me just play that clip again. The intense heat forced any gaseous daughter elements to escape. I feel like you can be knowledgeable or intelligent if you choose to do so, but instead you decided to be willfully ignorant. Has any sand been added or taken out of the hourglass? In that case, we would look for evidence of the sample being tampered, and we only select the best rocks to date. To say that these samples may be tampered would assume that all our samples were tampered, all in the same way as to give us consistent but not accurate results. That's not very likely. Not to mention, it would also be claiming that scientists missed every blatantly obvious evidence of tampered samples. So by not likely, I meant there's no chance. Has the sand always been falling at a constant rate? See, here's the thing. You claim that the Earth is 6,000 years old, and you also hint that the decay rate may have been faster in the past. So fast that we ended up dating millions and billions of years for rocks when they're only a few thousand years old. Well, think about that for just a second. If that were the case, then our Earth would be so hot that no life could be sustained. If the decay rate were that fast, our Earth would be a fucking fireball. And don't give me that, oh, but God protected us bullshit. Please don't. I'm not in the mood. Since we did not observe the initial conditions when the hourglass started, and we haven't been watching the sand all the time since then, we must make assumptions. All three of those assumptions can affect our time calculations. Well, here's another hypothesis. Maybe you don't actually understand radioactive dating. Wow. I think, I think that just explained it all. Now, of course, there's more to understanding all of this, but enough said. I'm glad that's over. You know, one thing I found funny was the title of your video. It says, Carbon Dating, 100% Accurate, Right? Not. Well then, may I remind you that you didn't even mention carbon dating. Carbon dating is the shit with the C14 and nitrogen and stuff. We don't use that to date fossils millions of years old. You just meant radiometric dating, didn't you? But don't worry, neither am I. But at least I'm not ignorant about it. Also, I can't help but think you stole this video from somewhere else. I don't know. Answers in Genesis? I only came to your video because this was a video request sent to me and he linked me to your video. But come on man, make some original content. There are plenty of ways to fail at attacking science. You could be the next Ken Ham. Alright, I'm tired. Time for me to go. See you all next week. It's been fun.